Children of the Heavenly Father was probably one of the first hymns I ever learned. And we sang it very regularly at church and at home. And I also learned it in Swedish. And I was, when I was fairly small, my mother had a junior choir. And I sang in the junior choir. And I sang, I was the only one, they didn't have any altos, and so I sang the second part a lot. But th that hymn always meant so much to me. And it's writ written by Linda, uh, Lena Sandell, who wrote at least 100 hymns. And she was the daughter of a pastor, and I think he died in an accident. I don't know the exact details of that. But the many hymns that she's written have, I think, come out of the, the what she went through with that happening. And the awareness that we are children of the Heavenly Father, no matter what. When we die, we have a place to go to be with our Heavenly Father. And so the junior choir always sang it in Swedish. And I remember that we would stand in the balcony and sing Children of Heavenly Father. I think it was at Christmas time, but I, my memory at this point isn't that sharp. So. Thank you, Lee. song is As I Went Down to the River to Pray, just because I heard it before I started going to church, and it just gave me a sense of family and community that I hadn't had before, because I'd been switching schools and just not really fitting in. So when I heard that, it just really showed me that there is something else that I'm kind of missing out, so I thought, hmm, maybe I should try going to church. And then when I did start going, it just helped me find a place where I could just have people just to talk to, anyone I could talk to. And it just helped me through that because finding people was hard for me. chose I can only imagine because it really speaks to me. It's a song that has much, brings me much comfort with the words. It's something that I'm not afraid of dying. Even though this song particularly deals with death, I'm not afraid of that. If anything, I welcome it when that time comes because I know that at that time I'm going to be in the presence of my maker. And to me that is so exciting. I can't even think of anything more exciting than that. And it's overwhelming. Do I know how I'm gonna react when I come into his presence? I have no idea. Am I gonna fall on my knees? And I gonna, am I going to stand up and sing and jump up and down? I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna react, but I do know that it's going to be the greatest thing. say it after, sing it after every prayer that we said. Uh, we said family prayers every evening and I sang that song. Um, or if you didn't sing it, at least think, think about it and keep it in mind because uh, what the hymn is saying and what it means is that the practice of private prayer is a rich one Christian practice that can be really meaningful to an individual because praying in private can really allow uh, someone like me to fully engage themselves uh, with God and communicate with Him and uh, focus on what, what focus on what you're saying, focus on thanking Him, focus on letting your emotions and feelings go, uh, as opposed to praying in a public environment or coming to church or worship service or worship groups. Um, I feel like 
when I'm putting in public, I'm trying to uh, impress my, the group that I'm with or impress the public. And I feel like I don't, I'm not able to get the same type of emotions uh, out as, I'm, as I would uh, in a private. This is why, precious Lord, take my hand is my favorite hymn. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. Can you just close your eyes and imagine God taking your hand? The thought of my hand and God gives me comfort throughout my journey. I can definitely identify with the second verse. When my life is almost gone, and as I become older, please God, don't let me fall. I am humble, I am grateful to know that throughout my life, God has always been with me. God has been a beacon of light. He has guided me along the way. God's compassion and love will always be all I need. Please God, 